Hi, this is Dr. Mateki, back for part two of the solo model and economic growth. So we're going to try and make some sense of this model now and use it to make some predictions about what's going to happen to the standard of living over time, what's going to happen to the capital stock per person, output per person, consumption per person, etc. So remember, in this model, um, our output per person, or, or what we can think of as GDP per capita, is a function of capital per worker. F is a function of little k, in other words. So if k, little k gets bigger, capital per worker gets bigger, then we're going to have more output, which means we have more that's available for consumption, which is our ultimate goal here. So the standard of living, again, is going to be determined by how much stuff we're producing per person, how much we're consuming per person. So um, in other words, we care a lot about the behavior of capital per worker over time. So what is going to tend to happen to the capital stock over the course of many years? So the basic idea is very simple. Investment is going to increase the capital stock, but it's also going to be wearing out um, over time. So there's going to be, in other words, what we call depreciation. So we have two forces acting on the capital stock. Um, investment is going to be positively related to uh, the capital per worker, the stock of capital per worker, and depreciation is going to be negatively related to the um, stock of capital per worker. So what we can think about is uh, over the course of uh, a time period, the change in the capital stock, the delta little k, is going to be the difference between how much we're investing and how much is wearing out. If investment is bigger than depreciation, then delta k is going to be a positive number. In other words, the, the capital per worker, uh, the amount of capital per worker is increasing. If depreciation is greater than investment, then um, we're going to have a net loss of capital per worker. And this delta K is going to be a negative number. It's going to be decreasing. Um, and so remember, uh, in previous, uh, previous discussions, we talked about how investment is equal to the fraction of our output that is saved, S times F of K. If we substitute S times F of K into this expression for delta K up here for, for I, we get the central equation of the solo model. So this is what we call the, the law of motion for the capital stock, or uh, it basically describes how the capital stock changes over time. So delta K is equal to S times F of K minus delta K. Uh, and so that's going to be very important to have a, an intuitive understanding and a working knowledge of, of all the pieces of this uh, equation and to be able to use this to solve problems. So again, very, very important in this model. So why is this equation so important? Because everything else in the model depends on it. That's why. So once we determine the amount of capital per worker that this model is going to predict, we now can plug that into our production function f of k and that determines how much output we have. Once we know how much output we have, we also know how much consumption and investment we're gonna have. So once we know output, we can just use this, this fraction S, this, this uh, savings rate to determine how much of that output is saved and how much is invested. So S times Y is gonna be how much we're saving and one minus S times Y is how much we're consuming. So once we have little k, we know everything else. In part one, I alluded to something called the steady state capital stock. And so again, the way to think about this is the long run equilibrium. What's gonna to happen to the capital stock over time once it gets to the point where it doesn't have any tendency to go up or down anymore? It's gonna to converge to a certain level. So this is going to occur when the capital stock stops changing. In other words, the delta K is equal to zero. So when the delta K is equal to zero, we are in long run equilibrium called steady state. Whenever you see this little K star, the star tells you that this is a steady state or equilibrium value of the variable. So delta K is gonna be equal to zero when the right-hand side is equal to zero. The right-hand side is equal to zero when S times F of K is equal to delta K. Right, So we can see that by simply saying, all right, delta K is equal to zero. Zero equals S times F of K minus delta K, and then add delta K to both sides to uh, derive this expression right here. 
So let's look at this uh, situation graphically. So if you can understand this graph, you're going to understand this model pretty well. So remember, we said steady state long equilibrium is going to occur where depreciation delta K is equal to S times F of K, when depreciation is just balanced by investment. When those two things are equal, the curves cross. Remember, good things happen when curves cross. The equilibrium point is the intersection of the depreciation function and the investment function. If we drop down to the x-axis, we find the particular level of capital per worker that brings us um, to, to equilibrium. That represents the long-run equilibrium value of little k, or in other words, the steady state level of capital per worker, k star. So what is to, um, what were to happen if we have less than k star for some reason. Well, let's say we're at k1, which is less than k star. If we go up to these two um, uh, lines here, we see that depreciation, the blue line, is less than investment. If investment is less than, uh, excuse me, if investment is greater than depreciation, that means we are adding to the capital stock. So if we're at k1, we're not going to stay here, right? So it, the situation is such that at k1, we're going to be increasing k. So, uh, and that's going to be true as long as the red line is above the blue line. We're going to be adding to the capital stock. When is the capital stock going to stop changing? It's going to stop changing when depreciation investment are just equal. Similarly, when K2, uh, at K, uh, a value like K2 that is greater than the, the steady state value, we can see that depreciation, the blue line, is greater than investment, the red line. So we have more wearing out than we're putting into new capital. So ultimately, the capital stock is going to decrease if we're at a place like K2. And that's going to be true throughout this entire region here until we get to the point again where they just balance. So we would call the capital uh, per worker that brings these two forces into equilibrium is K star. If we go up to um, the red line and go to the uh, left hand side to the Y axis, we can figure out the equilibrium level of investment I star because remember this red line is our investment function. And one last thing to note is that once we arrive at K star, there's nothing that uh, is going to tend to push us away from that equilibrium. We're going to stay there until something in the system changes that, that pushes us away from equilibrium. So it could be a change in fiscal policy. It could be a change, uh, some other change in the savings rate. Um, it could be a change in technology or something that changes the fundamental nature of these relationships. Uh, the rate of depreciation uh, would be another thing that could change. But unless those things are changing, then we will tend to stay right at the steady state level of capital per worker. So it will be very important that you can use this diagram to answer questions about what happens, for instance, when the savings rate changes or when the depreciation rate changes, right? So in this, in this slide here, we're examining what happens when the savings rate goes up, okay? So um, imagine that we start at S1 times F of K uh, for our investment function and delta K here, the blue line is not changing. So we just have one of those. So Initially, we are at this point here, the intersection of the um, first investment function and the depreciation function. So this is our initial steady state value of capital, K1 star. So what happens when savings increases? Well, S2 is a bigger number now. So a bigger number times uh, the production function, F of K, is going to mean that this line is shifted up. So what we, we have done here is drawn a new line to represent the new investment function at the higher rate of savings. And so that means that, well, we now have a new intersection of these two lines and a new equilibrium. So we know right away by looking at this, we can drop down and see that the new steady state value of capital per worker is K2 star. Uh, but it's also important to understand how we get from K1 to K2. So um, if we are at K1 and all of a sudden the curve shifts up, well, at this point now, the new investment line is higher than the depreciation line, the blue line. So our net investment is going to be positive. In other words, we're going to be adding to the capital stock here in the amount of this gap here. So the next period, we would be out in this direction, and we'd still have a gap, and we'd keep increasing until we get to the point where um, the new investment and depreciation just balance one another. If we had a decrease in the savings rate, on the other hand, it would be the exact opposite. So instead, we'd be starting at a line like this, and we'd be shifting down to a line like this, and the capital stock would be moving in the opposite direction. If depreciation is changing, right, so delta gets bigger, then this is still going to be a straight line, but it's going to be a steeper line, right? This line's going to sort of rotate out, 
and that's going to create a new equilibrium point. If depreciation is decreasing, right, this line is going to rotate down in this direction, down towards the x-axis, and that's going to create a new equilibrium point out in this area. So decrease in depreciation, right, makes sense. That's going to lead to a higher steady state level of capital because less is wearing out each period. If delta is getting bigger, on the other hand, right, that's going to lead to more wearing out, and that's going to lead to a lower steady state level of capital per worker. So at this point, you should be able to analyze what happens when S changes, what happens when delta changes in this model. I almost didn't show this slide right now because I don't want to confuse you, but this is a preview of the thing we're going to talk about in part three. Um, so this is a graph that looks very similar to the to the main solo graph, but this is different because this is uh, instead of just measuring capital per worker on the x-axis, now we're measuring steady state capital per worker. So these are all along the x-axis are all different potential values of K star, the steady state uh, capital level. Uh, and on the y-axis, we're measuring steady state output and depreciation. So the whole idea here is that there is, you know, so we can end up in any number of K stars depending on the depreciation that we experience and the, the level of savings that we uh, have as an economy. So that begs the question, well, what's the best level of capital per worker? And so one way to assess that is to say, all right, well, which level of K star, which, which steady state value of capital per worker maximizes consumption per worker okay so now uh, in this graph we're no longer looking at the investment function we are looking at the production function so this is total output now this green line okay um, and so we know that in steady state investment equals depreciation so this fraction right here from the blue line down to the x-axis must much must be how much we're investing remember Everything that we don't invest in this model, we are consuming. So the blue line up to the green line, the production function, must be our consumption level. So this optimal level of capital per worker, or the, what we call the golden rule level, is the particular steady state that maximizes consumption per worker. Um, so uh, it could be that we are lower than this level, or it could be that we are higher. If we are lower, what's one way to achieve that? Well, that if we, if we need to have a steady state with uh, more capital per worker to optimize our consumption levels, and that means we better save more to increase capital. If we're, we have too much capital, that means we're saving investing too much and we, we should be moving in this direction. So we could either be higher or level lower than the, the steady, state level, steady state level that maximizes consumption. There's nothing in this model that says we are going to automatically end up at this golden rule level, right? So it's the policymaker's job to manipulate the particular steady state to get us to this point where, where we are maximizing consumption per worker. All right, these next couple of slides are a bit redundant, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. But this is going to help you visualize this process, this dynamic process over time. So it's important to think of economic growth as this, this process that happens over the course of many periods. Um, and so let's say that we are at K2 here. Uh, we want to we want to predict well for if we start at k2 what's going to happen over time to the capital stock per worker so the model predicts that we're going to end up at the steady state level k star how does it get there well if we start at k2 for some reason then we we can see here that investment uh, exceeds depreciation by the amount delta k so uh, in the next period where are we going to be well we're going to be at k2 plus the amount we're adding to the capital stock. So we can think of, uh, let's say that K2 is, is uh, let's say this is period one. Okay, where are we gonna be in period two? Well, period two is going to be K2 plus Delta K. So period two, we would be at K2 plus Delta K. We're gonna call that K3. So where would we be in period three? Well, at period three, right? So we would go up and we would identify another delta K here. That's the difference between the investment function and depreciation function. We can see that investment still exceeds depreciation. So where would period three be? Well, it would be 
this K3 value plus this delta K. Um, and that process is going to continue over the course of many periods, and it's going to keep increasing until we get to K star. And the key lesson here is that as long as the capital stock is less than the steady state level, investment is going to be greater than depreciation, and the capital stock is going to grow until it reaches K star. Right, And uh, you can probably figure that if K is greater than K star, the exact opposite process is going to happen. Depreciation will be less than, uh, excuse me, depreciation will exceed investment and the capital stock will shrink until we get to K star. So that's what we're going to look at in the next side. So this uh, shows us what's going to happen. We just, excuse me, we just looked at what's going to happen when K is less than K star. Now we'll draw out what happens when K is greater than K star. So we're going to work through this problem here now, uh, as I just mentioned. So uh, we're going to draw the solo model diagram. We're going to label the initial steady state K star. Then we're going to see uh, what happens when we start at a value greater than the steady state level. We're going to call that K1. Uh, so I've already sort of told you what's going to happen. Now we're going to sort of visualize it in this diagram. All right, so I'm going to walk you through this uh, answer, how to answer this uh, sort of question graphically. So I've set up our model here, our, our axes. So remember on the y-axis, we have investment and depreciation. And on the x-axis, we have capital per worker, little k. So in order to set up uh, the initial conditions, I'm first going to draw the depreciation function. And I'm left-handed, so this is going to probably mess things up here. Um, so I'm going to start at the origin and draw just a straight line. So this is our delta K depreciation. So then we also have our savings function that looks a lot like our production function. So something like this. So let's call this S times F of little K. This is our investment function. So the first part of the question was, where is the steady state value? So that's easy enough to identify where the curves cross. We drop down to the X axis. That becomes our K star, our capital per worker in steady state. So now the question was, well, what happens if we start at some value of capital per worker K1 that's greater than K star? So in other words, we're at K1 out here somewhere. So if we're at K1, we can use the diagram and see that, well, there's our investment right here. Uh, we go up a little further and we get to our depreciation. So depreciation exceeds investment, and so that means that the capital stock is going to be shrinking. So um, let's call this difference between the height of the investment function and depreciation function delta K1. This is going to be negative. It's going to be less than zero. So if the capital stock is shrinking, we know we are going to be moving in this direction. So what we are going to do is end up at a new point, K2, Right, and this K2 is going to be equal to K1 minus delta K1. Okay, so we're going to start at K1 and we are going to subtract the amount here, this delta K1. And that's going to put us at K2. So, like, think of K1 as time period one. After time period one, we're going to end up at K2. Um, so what's going to happen in the period following that? Well, we can see that investment still is less than depreciation. So the gap here is getting smaller, but let's call this delta K2. This is still less than zero. So capital stock is still going to be shrinking. So we are going to move further in this direction and we'll end up at some place like here, like K3. All right. So what is K3? So K3 is equal to little k2 minus delta k2, right? And that process is going to continue and continue on until we get to the steady state k star. So real quickly, I want to walk you through, um, you know, analyzing the change in equilibrium when um, delta changes or uh, S changes, so if the rate of depreciation changes or the rate of savings changes. So I'm just going to keep some of the details out of this to make it quick. Um, so th the first part here is, um, so what happens if, if delta goes down? So uh, again, let's quick set up our model. It's going to look something like this. So the equilibrium is going to be 
here initially. So let's call this k star 1. So remember this straight line is delta, let's call this delta 1k. So if delta is going down, that's going to that's gonna make uh, this line rotate down. So we can think of delta as being the slope of this, this line, delta k. So if the slope is getting smaller, it's going to be flatter. So it's going to rotate in this fashion here. So this would be like, that's kind of ugly, but let's call that delta 2k. So delta 2 is less than delta 1, so that depreciation line rotates down. So then we have a new equilibrium. Let's call that k2 star. So ultimately what happens if depreciation goes down? Well, we're going to end up with a higher level of capital per worker in equilibrium. And then remember that filters into those other things, higher output per worker, higher consumption per worker, etc. So if depreciation goes down, that's a good thing for the standard of living. Um, so similarly, what happens, let's say that savings goes down. Actually, just let me do this here. So the result is that K star is going to go up. So what happens if savings goes down? So again, let's, let's set up our, our model with the initial conditions. Here's delta K. Here's our investment function, S times F of K. Um, so since we're looking at savings now, let's call this S1. So if the savings rate goes down, something smaller than S1, then this is going to shift down as well. Again, a smaller number multiplied by uh, F of little k is going to yield a smaller value. So for any given value of k, this is going to be lower now. So it's going to shift down and be something like, like that. So here is our uh, initial steady state. Should have done that already. So here's k star 1. So our new investment function is going to be the new lower savings rate multiplied by f of k. So we have a new line there. So the new intersection is here. So here's our k star 2. And voila, we save less of our income. That's less that can be invested. That's less we're putting into the capital stock. It's not going to be able to cover as much depreciation and the capital stock per worker is going to decrease. So uh, the final result here is that steady state capital is going to decrease. And you can do these things in both ways and see that you'd get the opposite result. So that's basically what I want to do for part two here to give you a, a you know, some tools to be able to use this diagram to analyze what's going to happen to uh, all of these different variables in the solo model over time when things happen.